Howdy folks, Ed here. Welcome back to Bullnose Garage. Today, I'm here with my trusty 1985 F-150 and I'm gonna to talk to you about the engine that's in this truck. It is one of the most rock solid and bulletproof engines that Ford has ever produced and maybe one of the most rock solid bulletproof engines ever made for the uh, consumer vehicle market. And that is the Ford 300 in line six. So let's get into it. Bulletproof. That's the word people use to describe the Ford 300 inline six engine. Let's see what makes it tick. This information is aimed at those interested in learning more about this robust engine or considering it for a project or a swap. Much of this data is sourced from various places on the internet. And while I haven't had direct personal experience rebuilding this engine, I've driven it a lot and done my best to fact check and verify the information presented here. I hope it serves as a useful guide for anyone looking to dive into the world of the Ford 306. So what is the Ford 300 in line six exactly? The Ford 300 in line six engine, often simply referred to as the 300, is part of Ford's straight six engine family. Produced between 1965 and 1996, the 300 was known for its durability and torque, making it a popular choice for trucks and heavy duty vehicles. The 300 refers to the engine's displacement in cubic inches, while its metric equivalent is 4.9 liters. The engine is known for its simple design, featuring an overhead valve setup and inline cylinder configuration, which contributed to its longevity and ease of maintenance. The 306 was produced primarily at Ford's Cleveland engine plant in Ohio, contributing to the association with the region. Over its production span, Ford manufactured over 4 million units of the 306, making it one of the most produced engines in the company's history. The engine shares some components with other Ford inline sixes, such as the 240 and 200 engines, but it's distinguished by its larger displacement and more robust construction. This engine was widely used in Ford's F-Series trucks, as well as in vans, industrial applications, and even in some agricultural equipment. So let's look at the stats. The Ford 300 has a displacement of 300 cubic inches or 4.9 liters. The engine features a bore of 4 inches and a stroke of 3.98 inches, which contributes to its exceptional low end torque. The deck height is right at 10 inches. The engine's compression ratio varies slightly depending on the year and application, but it generally ranged from 8 to 1 to 9 to 1. The 306 is known for its ability to produce high torque at low RPMs, with peak torque often occurring around 1600 to 2200 RPM. The firing order for the Ford 306 is 153624, which is a standard configuration for inline six engines. This helps in maintaining a smooth and balanced operation. The block is cast iron, contributing to the engine's considerable weight of around 500 to 550 pounds. Despite its heft, the 306 is valued for its ability to withstand extreme conditions and heavy loads. The engine is equipped with a two-bolt main bearing cap design, although some heavy-duty versions featured a four-bolt main configuration. The Ford 306 was first introduced in 1965 as a successor to the 262 cubic inch inline six engine. It was designed to offer more power and torque while maintaining the reliability that Ford's inline engines were known for. The engine was initially used in light-duty trucks, but quickly found its way into a variety of vehicles, including the Ford Bronco, E-Series vans, and even some sedans and station wagons. Over the years, the 306 underwent several changes to improve performance and meet evolving emission standards. In the late 1970s, Ford introduced changes to the cylinder head design to improve airflow and combustion efficiency. These changes included the introduction of hardened valve seats to accommodate unleaded gasoline, which became standard in the U.S. around this time. In the 1980s, Ford introduced electronic fuel injection, or EFI, to the 306, which significantly improved fuel efficiency and drivability. This version of the engine, known as the EFI 300, became a mainstay in Ford trucks throughout the 1980s and 1990s. The engine also received updates to its ignition system, 
including the transition from a points-based distributor to an electronic ignition system. One of the most notable features of the Ford 306 is its exceptional torque output. The engine was designed with a long stroke and a relatively low compression ratio, which allowed it to produce a significant amount of torque at low RPMs. This made it ideal for applications that required pulling power, such as towing and hauling heavy loads. Another key characteristic of the 306 is its durability. The engine's robust construction with its heavy cast iron block and cylinder head allowed it to withstand harsh conditions and extended use without significant wear. This durability made it a popular choice in industrial and agricultural applications where reliability and longevity were paramount. The Ford 306 was used in a wide range of vehicles over its three-decade production run. Some of the most common applications included the Ford F-Series trucks from 1965 to 1996, the Ford Bronco from 1966 to 1996, and the Ford E-Series vans from 1968 to 1996. This engine was a popular engine choice for Ford F-Series trucks, particularly in the F-100, F-150, and F-250 models. Its torque and reliability made it a favorite among truck owners who needed a dependable workhorse. The 306 was also available in the Ford Bronco, particularly in the early years of its production. The engine's torque made it well-suited for off-road use and towing. And the 306 was commonly used in Ford E-Series vans, where its durability and low-end torque were assets for both commercial and passenger applications. Identifying a Ford 306 engine can be done through several means, including casting numbers and physical characteristics. The engine block typically features a casting number on the driver's side just above the oil pan rail. This number can provide information about the engine's production year and application. Additionally, the 306's distinctive inline six configuration and overall size make it easy to identify visually. While the Ford 306 is similar in design to other Ford inline sixes, such as the 240 and 200 engines, is distinguished by its larger displacement and more robust construction. The 240 engine, for example, shares many components with the 306, but it has a shorter stroke and lower displacement, making it less powerful and torquey than the 300. The 306 also differs from Ford's smaller inline six engines in terms of its applications. While the 200 and 240 engines were often used in lighter vehicles, the 306 was primarily used in trucks and heavy duty applications where its torque and durability were most needed. Now, while the Ford 306 is not typically thought of as a high-performance engine, it has a dedicated following among enthusiasts who appreciate its durability and torque. With the right modifications, the 306 can be transformed into a powerful engine capable of impressive performance. Popular upgrades for the 306 include porting and polishing the cylinder head, installing a performance camshaft, and upgrading the exhaust system. These modifications can help the engine breathe better and produce more horsepower while still retaining its characteristic low-end torque. For those looking to take the 306 to the next level, stroker kits are available that can increase the engine's displacement and further boost its torque and power output. With the right combination of parts and tuning, a well-built 306 can produce over 300 horsepower and 400 foot-pounds of torque. Now, from what I've said here, you may wonder why anyone would ever want to swap out a 306. I'll give you my reasons, because that's exactly what I'm planning on doing. Taking the 306 out and putting a 351W in. There are a few reasons, but the biggest is what I mentioned earlier, the 4.9 liter inline six just isn't a high performance engine. It wasn't designed for it. And trying to shoehorn it into that role doesn't make sense to me. I'd rather take out the engine in good working order and let someone else use it like the workhorse it is in their truck. While the 306 is a workhorse, I'm aiming for something different with my bullnose, a street truck with a high horsepower V8 that delivers a throaty growl and a rumbling idle. Those characteristics just don't manifest in inline six, no matter what sort of mods I do. And as they say, there's no replacement for displacement. More cubic inches mean more potential power and torque, which is exactly what I'm after. Now, I've been told that putting a perfectly running 306 to put in a 351 Windsor is practically sacrilege. But if I want to ruin my own truck by replacing the most reliable engine ever built, well, that's my God-given right as an American. And I'll do it with a smile on my face. Hello. <laughs>
you can now get an exclusive 300 inline six hat, coffee mug, shirt, or sticker over in my merch store. It's a great way to show off your love for this incredible engine. Check it out on my website, onosgaragecom slash merch. So there you go. Everything I know or pretend to know about the Ford 300 inline six. I've had this engine in this truck, obviously ever since I bought it four or five years ago, it has never failed me and uh, never given me a hard time. Now I've had to replace a couple components, the alternator, uh, the fuel pump, a couple things like that, but the engine itself has never failed to start and uh, never had a problem. With my NP435 and Granny Low first, I feel like I could probably pull the house off of its foundations using this truck. So if you're thinking about doing a build or uh, maybe even keeping your old 306 around and doing some modifications to it and making it better, hopefully this video has helped you uh, get a little bit more information. Uh, if you find videos like this helpful, if you uh, think I did a good job or you just wanna kind of give me some kudos, then hey, you know, hit that thumbs up. Uh, give me a subscribe. It really helps out the channel. I'm planning on doing some more videos like this about other Ford engines, uh, maybe even transmissions, that kind of stuff. Uh, right now, I just don't have the time to devote to working on the truck like I'd like to, but I still want to make videos. So I'm thinking about doing an informational series uh, about, like I said, engines, transmissions, that kind of stuff, just like this one that I just did. So if you like that kind of content, you want me to do more of it, then just let me know. Drop me a comment. Say, hey, yeah, Ed. Can you do one about the Cleveland or do one about the, the 460 or whatever you might want to see? Uh, I'd be happy to do that kind of research and, uh, and put it out for you guys. So again, thanks so much for watching and we will see you next time.